Hi everyone, this is Hadi Zafar, and welcome to First Aid Explained, where I, as a medical student, explain page by page of the First Aid USMLE Step 1 2021. Today we'll be going through the biochemistry portion, pages 56 to 61. So let's begin. So here we have gene expression modifications. And this is basically insertions or deletions of genes into a mouse genome. And this technique is used to study gene expression and protein synthesis. So it's transgenic strategies where mice are involved and their random insertion of genes into a mouse genome. And this targeted insertion or deletion of a gene through homologous recombination within the mouse gene. The common terms used in gene expression are is knock in and knock out. Knock out refers to removing a gene or taking it out, whereas knock in refers to inserting a gene. Random insertion is constitutive expression, whereas targeted insertion is conditional expression. Now there's something called as the RNA interface. And this is a process whereby small non-coding RNA molecules target mRNAs to inhibit gene expression. So first we have microRNA, which is nat naturally produced by a cell as hairpin structures. And this hairpin structure has loose nucleotide pairing, uh, which allows broad targeting of related mRNAs, where miRNAs or microscopic microRNAs bind to mRNA. This causes a block in the translation of mRNA and sometimes facilitates in de degradation. Now, abnormal expression of microRNAs contribute to certain malignancies, example by silencing an mRNA from a tumor suppressor gene. Then we have small interfering RNA, and this is usually derived from exogenous dsRNA sources, so for example, like a virus. Once inside a cell, siRNA requires a complete nucleotide pairing, leading to highly specific mRNA targeting, resulting in mRNA cleavage prior to translation. And this can be produced in a in vitro transcription for gene knockdown experiments. Now moving on to the biochemistry genetic portion, and first we have the important genetic terms. So the first being codominance, which means that both alleles contribute to the phenotype of the heterozygote. Codominance basically means that neither allele can mask the expression of another allele. An example would be the HBO blood groups, ABAB. So for example, if an individual inherits allele A from their mother and allele B from their father, they would have a blood type of AB. Then there's variable expressivity, where patients with the same genotype have varying phenotypes. An example of this is two patients with neurofibromastitis type 1, or NF1, may have varying disease severity. Then there's incomplete penetrance, where not all individuals with a mutant genotype show the mutant phenotype. And this percentage of penetrance times the probability of inheriting genotype equal the risk of expressing phenotype. For example, as Barca A1 or BRCA1 gene mutations do not always result in breast or, or ovarian cancer. Pleiotropy is one gene contributes to multiple phenotypic effects. And this could be explained by untreated phenylketuria or PKU, which manifests with light skin, intellectual disability, and musty body odor. So the one gene contributes to multiple symptoms. Then there's anticipation, which is increased severity or early onset of a disease in succeeding generations. So for example of this is trinucleotide repeat diseases, such as Huntington disease. Lastly is loss of heterozygosity. If a patient inherits or develops a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, the wild type allele must be deleted or mutated before cancer develops. And this is not true of oncogen genes. So an example of this is retinoblastoma and the two-hit hypothesis. And this two-hit hypothesis is basically suggesting that most tumor suppressor genes require both alleles to be inactivated, either through mutations or epigenic silencing to cause a phenotypic change, such as Lynch syndrome or Leifromania syndrome. All right, moving on. 
So here are more terms used in genetics, the first being dominant negative mutation, which is, is exerts a dominant effect. A heterozygote produces a non-functional altered protein that also prevents a normal gene product from functioning. So an example of this is a single mutated p53 tumor suppressor gene results in a protein that's able to bind DNA and block the non-mutated p53 from binding to the promoter. <coughs> then we have linkage disequilibrium. And this is the tendency for certain alleles at two linked loci to occur together more or less often than expected by chance, measured in a population, not in a family, and often varies in different populations. Basically, linkage disequilibrium, or LD, is the co correlation between nearby variants such that the alleles at neighboring polymorphisms are associated within a population more often than if they were unlinked. Then we have mosaicism which is the presence of genetically distinct cell lines in the same individual. Somatic mosaicism is mutation arising from the mitotic errors, often fertilization, and propagates through multiple tissues or organs. The gonadal type is mutation only in the egg or sperm cells. If parents and relatives do not have the disease, suspect germline or gonadal mosaicism. An example of this is McCune Albright syndrome, and this is due to the G5 protein activating mutation. Presents with unilateral cafe oulat spots with ragged edges, polyostic fibrosis dysplasia, so the bone is replaced by collagen of fibroblasts, and at least one endocrinopathy, for example, as precarious puberty. Lethal is this disease or this syndrome if mutation occurs after, sorry, before fertilization, affecting all cells, but survivable in patients with racism. Then we have locus heterogeneity, which is mutations at different loci can produce a similar phenotype. So for example, albinism, renitis pigmentosa, familial hyper, hypercholesteremia. Allelic heterogeneity, is different mutations in the same locus producing the same phenotype, for example, beta thalassemia. Heteroplasmy is the presence of both normal and mutated mtDNA. mtDNA is mitochondrial DNA, and this is results in a variable or variable expression in mitochondrial inherited disease. For example, is mtDNA is passed from mother to all children. Uniparital disomni is basically offspring receiving two copies of a chromosome from one parent and no copies from the other parent. Heterodysomny or heterozygous indicates a meiosis one error, whereas isodysomy or homozygous indicates a meiosis type two error or postzygotic chromosomal duplication of one of the pairs of chromosomes and a loss of the other of the original pair. So uniparent, for example of this, is uniparental is euploid, correct number of chromosomes. Most occurrences of a uniparental disomni is UPD, which is normal phenotype. Consider isodisomni in an individual manifesting a recessive disorder when only one parent is a carrier. Example, examples include Prader-Willi and Angelman syndromes. Now we talk about the Hardy-Wenberg population genetics. If P and Q represent the frequencies of alleles, capital A and lowercase a, respectively, in a population, then P plus Q equals 1. P squared is equal to the frequency of homozygosity for allele capital A, whereas Q squared is equal to the frequency of homozygosity for allele lowercase a. Two PQ is equal to the frequency of heterozygosity, or basically the carrier frequency, if an autosomal recessive disease is present. Therefore, the sum of the frequencies of these genotypes is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equaling 1. The frequency of an, of an X-linked disease in males is equal to Q, and in females is Q squared. 
The Hardy-Berg law ass assumptions include no mutation occurring at the locus, natural selection is not occurring, complete random mating, no net migration, large population. If a population is in hardy wenberg equilibrium, then the values of P and Q remain constant from generation to generation. All right, moving on. Here we have the disorders of imprinting. Now, imprinting is one gene copy is silenced by methylation, and only the other copy is expressed. Now, this is the parent of origin effects. So we have two main syndromes of imprinting, predator release syndrome and angel man syndrome. Now, which gene is silent in predator release syndrome? That would be the maternally derived genes which are silenced. And the disease occurs when the parent paternal allele is deleted or mutated. The signs and symptoms of Prady willis syndrome include hyperphagia, obesity, intellectual disability, hypogonadism, and hypotonia. And the chromosomes involved are chromosomes 15 of paternal origin. And 25% of cases are due to maternal uniparental dysomony. A way to remember this is POP. P for Prader Willi, O for obesity and overreading, and P for parent paraternal allele deleted. Then we have Angelman syndrome. And this is parentally derived UBE3A that is silenced. And this, dis this disease occurs when the maternal allele is deleted and mutated. The signs and symptoms of Angelman syndrome are seizures, ataxia, severe intellectual disability, and inappropriate laughter. A helpful mnemonic is set sail for Angel Island. S for seizures, A for ataxia, I for intellectual disability, and L for inappropriate laughter. The chromosomes are involved as the UBE3A on the maternal copy of chromosome 15. And 5% of cases are due to paternal unipatrial dysomony. A nice mnemonic is MAMAS, or M for maternal allele deleted, A for Angelman syndrome, M for mood, a for ataxia, and S for seizures. All right. Now here we have the modes of an inheritance, which is autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant, and mitochondrial inheritance. Let's talk about autosomal dominant. And this is often due to the defects in structural genes. Many generations, both males and females are affected. This is often pleiotrophic, meaning multiple apparently unrelated effects and variable expressive, different between individuals. Family history is crucial to diagnosis, with one affected heterozygous parent on average of 50% of children affected. Then there's autosomal recessive, with two carrier heterozygous parents, on average, one-fourth of children will be affected, homozygous, or half of children will be carriers and one-fourth of children will be neither affected nor carriers, or basically 25%. Now these autosomal recessive inheritance is often due to enzyme deficiencies, usually seen in only one generation, and commonly more severe than dominant disorders. Patients often present in childhood, and there's increased risk in consanguineous families. An infected individual with affected sibling has 2 by 3 probability of being a carrier. Then there's X-linked recessive, where sons of heterozygous mothers have a 50% chance of being affected. There's no male-to-male -male transmission, and this skips generations. And this is commonly more severe in female, males, females being usually homozygous to be affected. Then there's X-linked dominant, which is transmitted through both parents. Mothers transmit to 50% of daughters and sons. Fathers tr transmit to all daughters, but no sons. And examples for this is fragile X syndrome, Alport syndrome, hypophosphatemic rickets, also called as X-linked hypophosphatemia, phosphate, where phosphate wasting at the proximal tubule leads to rickets-like presentation. Lastly is mitochondrial inheritance, transmitted only through the mother. All offspring of affected females may show signs of the disease. And this variable expression in a population or even within a family due to heteroplasmy. So 
So examples for this are mitochondrial myopathies, which are very rare disorders, often presenting with myo myopathy, myopathy, lactic acidosis, and CNS disease. Examples of me Mila syndrome, which is mitochondrial encephalomyopathy, lactic acidosis, and stroke-like episodes. Second, de second de degree to failure in oxidative phosphorylation. Muscle biopsy often shows a ragged red fibers due to accumulation of diseased mitochondria in the subsarcolemma of the muscle fiber. Then we have Leber hereditary optic neuropathy, or LHON, and this is cell death in the optic nerve neurons which leads to subacute bilateral vision loss in teens and young adults, and most of them are 90% males, and this is usually permanent. This also leads to neuro neurological dysfunction, cardiac conduction defects. Here we have the list of different diseases that are autosomal dominant, all of which are important to remember, but keep in mind of Marfan syndrome, Lyophrominus syndrome, Huntington disease, and dominant autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, as well as Oslo Weber Rendu syndrome. Then we have the list of autosomal recessive diseases, which are oculocutaneous albinism, phenylcutaneuria, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, Wilson's disease, sphingolipidosis heterochromatosis, glycan storage disease, thalassemia, mucopolysaccharidosis, except for Hunter syndrome, Friedrich ataxia, Kardegger syndrome. A really nice way to remember this is ARPKD. Oh please, can students who score high grades tell me features of the kidney disorder, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. Okay, moving on to cystic fibrosis. And this is an autosomal recessive defect in CFTR gene on chromosome number 7, commonly caused by deletion of PHE508, most common and is the most common lethal genetic disease in patients with European ancestry. The pathophysiology is that GFTR encodes an ATP-gated chloride channel that secretes chloride in lungs and GI tract and reabsorbs chloride in sweat glands. PHE508 deletion leads to misfolded protein, improper protein trafficking, and protein retention on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This leads to protein absent from the cell membrane, leading to a decreased chloride H2O secretion, leading to increased intracellular chloride, resulting in compensatory increase in sodium reabsorption via epithelial sodium channels in turn leading to increased H2O re reabsorption, leading to abnormally thick mucus secreted into lungs and GI tract, again leading to increased sodium reabsorption, also causing more negative transepithelial potential difference. The diagnosis of cystic fibrosis is the clear increase of chloride concentration in pylocarpine-induced sweat test in, in the hospital. This can present with contraction, alacosis, and hyperkalemia. The reason why you see alkalosis and hypokalemia is because of the ECF, H2, H2O, and Na plus losses via sweating and contaminant renal sodium and hy hydrogen wasting. This leads to increased immunoreactive trypsinogen, or which is a newborn screening tool, due to clogging of pancreatic duct. Now there, there are many complications of cystic fibrosis. The major one being recurrent pulmonary infections, usually by S. aureus in infancy and early childhood, adrenosa in adulthood, adulthood, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, which leads all leads to reticular nodular pattern on chest X-ray, opsifications op of sinuses, nasal polyps, nail clubbing pancreatic insufficiency, malabsorption with steroturia, and fat-soluble vitamin A deficiencies, A, D, and E, K. This leads to progressing of endocrine dysfunction, biliary cirrhosis, liver disease, and meconium ileus in newborns. Infertil infertility in males is pretty common, and this is due to the absence of vas difference. Spermatogenesis, however, may be unaffected. And subfertility in females 
and amenorrhea or abnormal cervical mucus. Now, the treatment for cystic fibrosis is multifactorial with chest physiotherapy, albuterol, aerosolazide, dorsinase alpha or DNase, and inhaled hypertonic salt saline facilitating mucus clearance. Azithromycin used as anti-inflammatory agent Ibrofen slows disease progression, whereas pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy, or, and the main enzyme being pancreatolipase, for pancreatic insufficiency. The combination of lumacraftor and tezocraftor corrects misfolding proteins and improves their transport to cell surface. And this combination of lumacraftor with or tezocraftor with ivacraftor helped open chloride channels and improve the chloride transport. Okay, here in the last page, we have a list of X-linked recessive diseases, which all are important to remember, but keep in mind of G6PD, uh, G6PD deficiency, hemophilia, Hunter syndrome, Lesch 9 syndrome, and females with Turner syndrome, which are more likely to have X-linked recessive disorder. Now, X inactivation during development one of the, what happens here is that one of the X chromosomes in each XX cell is randomly deactivated and condensed into a bar body, which is a methylated heterochromatin. If skewed inactivation occurs, XX individuals may express X-linked recessive diseases such as G6PD. Penetrance and severity of X-linked dominance diseases in XX individuals may also be impacted. Now moving on to muscular dystrophies. So we have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, Becker's, as well as mitonic dystrophy. Now Duchenne muscular dystrophy is an X-linked recessive disorder typically due to frame shift deletions or nonsense mutations. To remember this is that Duchenne is deleted dystrophin. This leads to truncated or absent dystrophin protein, progressive myofiber damage, weakness begins in pelvic girdle muscles and progresses superiorly. Pseudo hypertrophy of calf muscles due to fibro fatty replacement of muscles, you can see it in the picture A, leading to waddling gait. Onset is usually before five years of age. Dilated my cardiomyopathy is commonly cause of the death. There's something called grower sign, which is seen in, in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where patients use upper extremities to help stand up. Classically seen in, like you, like you guessed it, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And, but also seen in other muscle dystrophies and inflammatory myop myopathies. Now, the Duchenne gene, or DMD, is the largest protein coding human gene and increased chance of spontaneous mutation. Dystrophin helps anchor muscle fibers, primarily in skeletal and cardiac muscle. It connects the intracellular uh, cytoskeleton actin to the transmembrane proteins alpha and beta dystroglycan, which are connected to the extracellular matrix. Loss of dystrophin leads to myonecrosis, increasing CK and aldolase, leading to genetic testing confirming the diagnosis. Here is an image of Gower's sign. Then we have Becker muscular dystrophy, which is also an X-linked recessive disorder, typically due to non-frame shift deletions in dystrophin gene. Now partially, partially functional instead of truncated. This is less severe or a less severe form of Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So to remember, this is Becker is better. Onset is an adolescence or early adulthood. Deletions can cause both Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophies. Two thirds of cases have large deletions spanning one or more exons. Finally, we have myotonic dystrophy, which is autosomal dominant. And this onset occurs at 20 to 30 years. 30 years. Now, CTG, trinucleotide repeat expansion in the DMPK gene, leads to abnormal expression of myotonin protein kinase, which leads to myotonia, or difficulty releasing hand from, hand from handshake, for example. Muscle wasting, cataracts, testicular atrophy, frontal balding, and arrhythmias. To remember this, CTG or the CTG trinucleotide, C can stand for cataracts, T for toupee, or early balding in males, and G for gonadal atrophy. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Hope this helped, and
Thank you. Goodbye.